Hello, I'm Matt Stevens, commentator, Zwift commentator, and former British road champion, and also hair architect. Welcome to the world of Zwift. Well, hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, the show for those who are looking to make the most out of their time on Zwift, whether you use it to race, to train, or simply admire the beautiful sights of Watopia. So let's check out what we've got coming up in this week's show. I try out your weird and wonderful ride fuel suggestions in the feed zone. Lead game designer Wes Salmon talks us through the exciting new game release on Inside Line. There's more A to Zwift. Shane Gaffney joins me to unpack workout of the week. Nathan Guerra checks in to tell us what went down in the latest round of the ZRL Community Division. And Mr. 200,000 kilometers himself, Tim Searle, rides us through the New York City KOM after party route. But first, we couldn't do this show if it wasn't for our loyal fans. So please like, share and leave a comment to let us know what you'd like to see in our upcoming shows. And if you really love the world of Swift, please click on this button to subscribe. Where's the button? Ah, there's the button. So please do click on that, subscribe. And as always, I thank you. As always, there's plenty going on in the world of Zwift this week. Zwift Academy road winner Jay Vine put in an awesome display of climbing in his first stage race for Alps in Phoenix at the Tour of Turkey, taking second place on stage five, which was the Queen stage, and he also ended up finishing on the podium. Yes, Jay. Matt Stevens is currently hunting him down for a chat as we speak, so more from Jay soon. The new Zwift Academy Tri team have been announced. Eric Engel, Kristen Yak, Rebecca Duxbury, Lucas Bosnians, Kang Subsong and Vanessa Murray. And on 21st of April, tune in to the exciting new Two Times You podcast, where each week a different athlete takes you through their favourite Two Times You Zwift workout whilst answering questions from other Zwifters. Over at the ZRL community teams, they've been gearing up for round two of the races in some creative ways. Some have really stepped up their game from last season. Here's a very time-consuming effort from Electric Spirit. Nice. An epic vista from Team Dirt Wolfpack. Double nice. And the only game of top trumps I want to play by the Angry Birds. Treble nice. And last but not least, there'll be a new workout of the week this week with expert cycling coach Shane Gaffney. Stay tuned to find out more. Can you hear that sound? Yes, that is my salivary glands vibrating at 120 RPM, which means it must be time for the feed zone where I try out your favourite ride fuel, as suggested in the comments below. This week's suggestion comes from Captain Cramp, who says, one of my favourite cover nom-noms is avocado and vanilla ice cream. I sometimes then add some sriracha sauce on top for the kick and wash it all down with a nice Belgian beer. Well, may I say, Captain Cramp, is it my birthday? Because that sounds wunderbar. And here it is. So, um... We've got the avocado, which I love. We've got the ice cream, which I love. We've got the sriracha sauce, which gives me heartburn. And hello, it's even been chilled. So um, let's have a little taste of this. I mean, I would like to know when you actually have this and why. I mean, are you pregnant? Mmm. Okay, so there's the sweetness and the creaminess. Wow, that's hot. Oh, wow. Okay, so you've got the sweetness of the ice cream, which very much cools the palate. You've then got the slightly strange consistency of an avocado. And then you've got the sriracha on top. Now the sriracha and the avocado goes wonderfully with the ice cream. Hmm. Let me just say, I'm worried about this when it comes out, but we'll take another spoonful just for giggles and you know, the other things. And then, salut. Hmm. Oh my. Pretty sure though, that if I was doing a session on Zwift, maybe workout of the week, had that and then this, I would vomit. Now, if you would like to suggest something for me to eat here on the, uh, the uh, feed zone, then please do let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna say something nice like this, then I'll love you forever. Oh. Uh, Wes Salmon is here with me now, lead game designer at Zwift. It's great to have you with me, Wes, how are you? I'm doing good, OJ. How are you doing? I'm good. Excited to talk HUDs. What is high display mode and why is everyone getting very excited about it? 
So hide the display mode is a system we've built to allow you to basically turn off the numbers that may be uh, getting in your way while you're trying to experience Watopia or just ride your bike in a group. Uh, so right now we allow you to turn off all aspects of the display, whether it be the riders nearby list, your own speed and power, your distance and so on. So you can really focus on the group, whether it be learning how to chase down a pack without looking at their numbers uh, or just enjoying the visuals of, of Watopia. So when we first started testing out this feature, we did sights and sounds rides where we spent a little bit of time with the community in rides where no one had the display turned on to get their feedback. So we wanted to see who could get the best picture of Jarvis the bear falling out of the tree in the forest. Uh, and what that really did was allowed people not to focus on how fast they were going or how long they were riding, uh, but how they were spending time with the group doing something cool. Well, one thing that's occurred to me then, if we're turning off all of the numbers and the display, the HUD, the heads of display, that means you can get better selfies. For sure, that's one of the things we love about this feature is that most people don't necessarily know that you can turn off some of the display at the end of your ride for screenshots you may have taken, uh, but that's kind of hard to do and it's not very discoverable. What this will allow you to do is that when you take your screenshot with the display turned off, it's gonna be a beautiful screen. It's gonna be a visual that you can really enjoy. And one of the other things that's really cool about taking your selfies is that it gives people the opportunity to explore some of our camera views. A lot of people don't realize that we have some really great camera views that are not necessarily third person or first person. Uh, we have a really cool drone camera that if you press zero on your keyboard or you bring up the camera view in the action bar, you can spin it completely around you and get some really great views of the vistas in Watopia or going up mountains uh, in the different areas of the world. Uh, so there's a lot of great opportunities to really you know, let your artistic side show when it comes to taking your screenshots in Zwift. Oh, it's so cinematic, I love it. And my avatar's got a, a wonderfully lush beard as well, which I think will look great in this mode. <laughs> Wes, personally, how exciting is it when you race without, without the heads of display? Uh, it can be really, really exciting. It's one of those things that you don't quite get until you try it. So other games that have you moving through space, like take a racing game, for example, they'll try to put you inside the car to give you a feeling of immersion. Uh, but since you're still sitting on your couch with a controller, you aren't necessarily feeling super immersed. You're visually immersed, but physically you're not. With Zwift, you're physically immersed in the game because you're the one pushing the pedals. You're the one doing 160 beats per minute, you know, putting out 200 watts to hold on to this virtual wheel in front of you. That combined with the, the clean view of all the world around you as it moves past you at speed can be really, really immersive, much more so than a general racing game that would have you on a road uh, moving in a car or a motorcycle. So do you think then, if you, if you turn on the high display mode and you race without any of the data around you, do you think after a few races it will make you a better racer? I think it'll make you a more aware racer of how the pack dynamics work in the game and how avatars react when uh, the person riding that avatar uh, does something like tries to sprint away. You'll start to recognize some of the traits of, of how the avatars move through the world. You'll start noticing that cadence is something that you can use as a signal to understand when someone is about to attack or not. Especially when they stand up on the bike, you know they're attacking even before their numbers go orange in your riders nearby list if you were to be uh, looking at that, that UI. Now, um, I do have to say you are Wes Zwift royalty and we have a question from the community. Are you ready to answer it? I'm as ready as I'm ever going to get. All right, here we go then. Uh, a frequently asked question is trainer difficulty. What does it mean? How do you utilize it? Who needs it? Let me know. So trainer difficulty, uh, first off, the, the word difficulty is probably misleading a little bit. So the goal of trainer difficulty is to allow a user to set up how much resistance they feel based on the terrain they're riding. Uh, and it only really applies in grades. Like on a flat surface, it doesn't necessarily matter much. Uh, but let's say you're going up a 10% grade, a really tough climb. If you're using the default trainer difficulty of 50%, uh, that climb is gonna feel like a 5% climb. But the important thing to note is that your power is the same. Power is power, and power is what moves your avatar through the world. Trainer difficulty does not have any impact on the speed your, your, your avatar moves. It only has an impact on the resistance you feel in your trainer. It's still up to you to put out the power required to go up that hill at a speed you wanna go, whether you're chasing down the pack or trying to hit your PRs. Uh, so users that typically want to have less shifting, 
uh, but still want to put out a lot of power, they'll move their slider backwards a little bit, maybe drop it down to 40 or 30%, so they can just stay in one or two gears the entire ride. But that also requires that they focus on their cadence because there'll be times where they need to put out a lot of power and they may not have a ton of resistance, specifically going downhill. So they may have to ramp up their cadence significantly to continue to put power to their trainer so that they don't actually fall behind. So then, Wes, what is, what is the salmon sweet spot? What is the perfect trainer difficulty in your mind? Um, if I'm just doing normal riding, I'll leave it at 50. Uh, but if I'm gonna be doing a ride where I know I'm gonna be sprinting downhill, uh, and this is where for me it makes the most difference, if I know I'm gonna have to keep up with people downhill, specifically people that are gonna possibly get a, a gravity bonus because they're heavier than me, uh, I may bump it up to 60 or 65%, so I can ensure that in the, the entire downhill section, I can put as much power to the pedals as I need to without spinning out my trainer. Wes, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, OJ. Stick around, we've got some cracking content on the way. C is for Crit City, the home to two event only courses. Crit is short for Criterium. These races are popular in the US and are typically closed courses of about one mile or so. Just think of NASCAR on bikes. Racers compete for a predetermined number of laps. For instance, downtown Dauphin is 1.2 miles and includes dead turns, a lap counter, and sharp corners. It feels like a downtown criteria. Bell Lap is on the same course but in reverse. It looks the same, but feels and races completely different. Research pays dividends. Study up on these two courses before racing so you can make smart decisions on the fly when you're competing. Crit City races are a great way to get in some hard, fast laps with Zwifters at your level. It's great training packed into a short workout, loads of power-ups, and loads of fun. See you in Crit City. Now, if you're looking to build power and endurance, and like me, you're so massively popular that you have a jam-packed social schedule, means you're short on time, well, you are in luck because fitness coach Shane Gaffney is here to talk us through his new Zwift workouts that are set to meet specific training goals. Shane, thank you for joining me. Hello, nice to meet you. Thanks for hey, having it's me. It's nice to meet you as well. I just, well, actually, I have met you through your training programs. You have caused me so much pain over the years and obviously made me fitter as well because most of the workouts, or at least a lot of them on Zwift, you have written over the years. A lot of them, yeah. Not all of them, but probably 30%. Well, before we get into workout of the week, which is the most popular of all the workouts on Zwift? The build me up plan is probably the most popular one I've created so far. Um, that's been done by quite a lot of people. And that's how most people start to know who I am is from build me up. It's always difficult to ask people to choose between their children, which is their favorite. What is your favorite though? Your favorite build workout? Me up. You, is it build 100%. me up? Well, apologies to the other workouts that you made. Obviously, they're in yeah. your but just not as close. Um, let's talk workout of the week. When did you launch workout of the week and why was it launched? Recently, actually, we only launched it about a month ago. Uh, we launched it really because at its core, Zwift is a training app. And the biggest strength, I think, for the training is the community behind it. So I'm sure you've, you've experienced this doing something solo versus doing something in a group. In a group, it's so much more fun, mm. right? whether it's the extra messaging, the extra ride-ons, and just being with a community of people, it really helps. So that was the impetus, I think, to launch Worker of the Week was how do we get people to train more on Zwift? But more importantly, how do we get people to have fun training on Zwift? Because I think fun brings more fitness, more consistency, and just more enjoyment in general. Well, yeah, that's the whole point of Zwift, isn't it? It's part of the whole advertising point of Zwift, campaign. I yeah. think. Make, yeah. make fitness fun. Um, and I must yeah. admit, I, I, am, I am very guilty of just jumping on Zwift and just racing. Because as you said, I like, I like the competition, I like the involvement. Sure. Why should we be doing these workouts then? How are they going to help us? How are they going to make us better Zwifters? Well, the workouts themselves are on the shorter end of the spectrum on purpose, because we're trying to hit that time crunched cohort of Zwifters. And it's just easier to fit something short and sweet into your schedule than you know a longer workout or even a longer race sometimes. But the benefit of them really is they're going to progressively challenge you and ideally going to make you a better Swifter because you'll be able to do them more consistently, more consistently, excuse me. Because I think at, a, at the baseline, consistency is the most important aspect of any good training program because you can have the best program in the world. But if you can't do it consistently and if you don't enjoy doing it, you're not going to get the results out of it that you want. 
What are you looking to work on with these workouts of the week? Is it endurance? Is it power? Is it FTP? All the above, really. I think at its basis, it's more fun. It should be fun, enjoyment, and something to do in a group. That's kind of the, the, the biggest core, I think, for these workouts. And like I said, with that, then you'll get more work on FTP some weeks. You might get more work on uh, sprint some weeks, maybe anaerobic capacity some weeks. So we'll try to vary them too, just again, to make them fun. You keep mentioning the word fun. Are we talking type two fun here, which is the sort of fun you start having when you finish doing them? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so, because <laughs> they're pretty short, but they're pretty uh, high intensity too. So yeah, they're definitely type two fun. And where can we find them? If you talk us through where we can find them. Sure. So if you log on to the uh, game and then you go to the training menu on the very left, on the very top, it says workout of the week. Okay. And then you click on that, that'll open and the workout sits right below that. Shane, I'm intrigued now. I'm in. I've bought in. I'm well into these new workouts of the week. So tell me, what can I get stuck into over the next couple of weeks? Well, first off, it only took me 10 minutes to sell you, so I must be a pretty good salesman. <laughs> Done, good. I'm in. <laughs> no, and the, the, so we have two more weeks of Tour of Watopia. So this is the big activation for this month is Tour of Watopia. So we have two more race simulations on Watopia. In May, we have some 30 minute workouts that were released last month. So we're gonna feature those. And then in June, we're gonna do some workouts for Pride because Pride On is a big activation in June. No, I'm so excited about them. But talk me through the actual workouts themselves. Maybe choose one and, and whet my appetite with it. What sort of thing will we be doing? How long? What sort of amounts of time will we have to hold? How will it work? I would say on average 30 to 45 minutes, with 30 minutes being the average, I would say. Uh, focus mostly on higher intensity work, so kind of short and sweet. And um, like I said, they'll run for a week at a time. So you can do them either on Wednesdays in a group workout, which is the workout Wednesday, or you can do them through the uh, folder at any time you'd like. So we tried to have flexibility in having them always available, but also have the community aspect of uh, group rides on Wednesdays. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Shane. I look forward to your workouts of the week. Shane, thank you very much. Ditto, thanks you. Nice to meet you. Tour of Watopia reaches stage five, the big boss. If you completed stages one to four, you worked a ton and earned double for it. On this last stage, it's time to choose your climb. Then show us your victory dance. If you join group A for the longer ride, you'll tackle the three sisters. Made up of the oldest trio on the island, the Hilly, Epic, and Volcano KOMs at 47.8 kilometers or 29.7 miles long, and 879 meters are almost 3,000 feet of climbing. This is one of the greatest tests on Zwift. If you want something a little less demanding, but only just a little less demanding, then groups B and E will be taking on the Mountain 8, including a visit to the radio tower. If you want to join the Group C ride, then the 21 hairpins of Alp de Zwift is what we have in store for you on Road to Sky. Whichever group you choose to ride with, remember, it's not a race. Take your time, enjoy the climbs, and if you miss any stages, don't worry. Makeup Week is just around the corner. It's time now to speak to the living god king of the Zero Community Divisions, that is Nathan Guerra. Nathan, thank you very much for joining me, buddy. Hey, OJ. Good morning. How you doing? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Now, Nathan, one thing I want to ask you about is a power-up that wasn't in the Premier Division's racing, but was across the communities, and that is the Steamroller, something I'd never used before, before the last round. What is it, and what, what made it so affected, and how much did it affect the racing? Yeah, so the Steamroller is a power-up. looks like a little tractor. It's pink with a tractor in the middle of it. And uh, when you get it, you can release it for 30 seconds. So it's actually a longer power-up than the Aero power-up. And it makes any pavement uh, or any road that is either dirt or cobbled or that would slow down your avatar because of the surface that you're going over, it makes it act like regular pavement. Your bike, no matter what bike you're on, goes the speed that it would go on a flat regular pavement road on Zwift. So that greatly increases the speed. And when you do use that, if you do get one in Zwift, you'll notice how great that speed increases. Think about on the other side of that though. 
how great were you actually slowing down and maybe did not realize it from that cobbled or dirt section or any other section that might be slowing you down out on Swift. So essentially 30 seconds, it's a long time to be going a lot faster than everybody else. Some people are saying through those specific sections on a course, like the course that we saw with the Beach Island Loop with that much dirt and that much cobbled, it's actually stronger than what we thought was the strongest power up, the aero power, because it lasts 30 seconds. Well, there you go, Nathan. That's the question I want to ask you. So did we see across the community divisions the strongest riders winning or the smartest riders? I would definitely say uh, a mixture of both, depending on where they used their ability, right? So Francesca Hall, we saw her walk away, actually, in the EMEA division uh, for the women. And she does not have a sprint. And knowing that she doesn't have a sprint, she was going to be going up against some of the strongest sprinters in, in the entire year of Zwift racing in the women's field. So she made an attack on lap two, got a gap, got caught, and then said, okay, that worked. And then attacked leaving Ocean Boulevard from that one kilometer to go uh, mark or so and ended up winning by a few seconds. So yes, the strongest riders won where they used their ability correctly on this course, right? We saw also sprints won in across the community divisions because people covered the moves at the right time and went uh, with the pack at the right time. Always a diminished pack actually because of the way this course came at you. I think we didn't see more than 20, maybe 30 uh, in a pack that did come to the line for a sprint uh, in the in the coverage that we did do. So uh, yeah, the strongest rider I think definitely won and the most tactical rider who had those strengths. Uh, one thing across the board, though, was diminished packs and a lot of breakaways. Payne Griffin in the men's side, absolutely awesome to see from next, walking away on the east, America's east, and then the America's west in the men's side as well. Michael Flanagan from dirt with a nice counterattack, walking away as well with a couple of seconds to the line, and the pack sleeping, unable to catch him. How much do you think people learned on this week's race about the different surfaces in Zwift? Because before I raced it, I did not realize it made so much of a difference. I think it's a big eye opener. And uh, even during a lot of the races that I'm doing, you know, uh, I do uh, very specific races in my training regimen. The KISS 100 has become a, uh, almost a staple of my training on the weekends a lot of times now, getting ready for race season. And I absolutely love to see the sections of cobbles and dirts. And I'm always watching for where those are in the course in order to try and create some sort of an instigation and try and get a breakaway. So now I'm really hoping that this opens up the community's eyes to see look there's tactics that actually can be used out on these courses and these sections of the course i think it's going to make zwift racing that much more interesting now that it's known and that's what we want both for when we're racing and for the spectacle of course nathan guerra always a pleasure thank you buddy yeah thanks oj great stuff now week three's route is the nyc kom after party points race and we've got the first person to hit the monstrous number of 200,000 kilometers to ride us through it take it away Tim Sell. Today we'll be taking a look at the New York City KOM after party route. It's 37 kilometers long with 480 meters of climbing. This route consists of three laps of the Gotham Grind reverse route, which does not include the Central Park steep Harlem Hill. It does include the shorter Cat's Paw Hill with a max 9% grade. When the three part laps are over and you reach the base of the forward KOM with the finish at the Highline KOM. It's a course with something for everyone. Be you a sprinter, a climber or a puncher like me. There'll be a frantic start, but it's worth a two minute effort to get into a good group before things settle down. This is Cat's Paw Hill, 9%. This is a crucial part of the lap. This lap's pretty flat, but this hill can split it. So if you need it to use a power up to stay with the group, use it here. We crossed the banner for the third and last time with about nine kilometers left to go. And about 200 meters climbing still left. Time to grab your last power up. And I'd hold on to this one. You'll need it on that climb. Here we go, just coming up to the start of the lower slopes of the climb. The first section is about one kilometre long with a maximum gradient of just 6%. Just a taster of what's to come. This is where we start to head into the, the upper regions of New York, the futuristic New York, my favourite part. 
Although you want to save a bit of energy for the final climbs, you have got a bit of a rest coming up for the last climb. Doesn't matter if you go a little bit into the red, you've got a bit of recovery time. Two kilometers to the climb, take your last drink, smash down your last gel. The final climb pitches up with about 1500 meters to go, rising in four steps, with the third and fourth hitting up to 17%. That is out. 16 already. Dance! Dance! Oh. Last 500 meters. One more climb. Shorter one. Now's a great time to use that power up if you're lucky enough to still have one. If you have the aero one, I'd use it now. If you've got the feather like me, save it for the climb. Let's hit that banner with everything we've got. Yeah, accelerate. Hope you can get something out of that. It's a great course, one of my favorites. Can I have a beer now. And so endeth another world of Zwift, but don't be sad, we'll be back next week with more tips, tricks, and inside knowledge on your massive Zwifting brains can handle. In the meantime, give us a comment below, let us know what you've been up to and what you'd like to see in next week's show. Until then, ride on.